Right, hello, welcome back to the next of these Niagara videos. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at the two final um, renderer types, uh, which are ribbon and light. So uh, let's get started with that. So I'm just going to actually start with ribbon. Uh, I'm going to start with the Niagara system. I'm going to use one of the templates that comes with the engine. And it's this radial burst here that comes with ribbon trails. So let's have a look at what these give us. Uh, Niagara system ribbon. Um, so we've got three emitters in here two called ribbon something and one just called omnidirectional burst and if I just isolate this and you can see it's just a burst of particles so there's nothing new happening here and I'm just going to delete that for clarity um, and start with these two here then so we have a ribbon trail leader and a ribbon trail follower so this if I just isolate and respawn is just some sprites spawning and falling um, nothing new here from when we did our sprites lesson uh, but this one here, Ribbon Trail Follower, we're actually getting a ribbon. I'm just going to up the width on that a little so you can see what's going on. Uh, and I might just up the scale of my sprites as well so you can see this nice and clearly what's happening. So you see our particles happening and we're getting these trails that follow along. So what is the ribbon doing? Well, it's taking the particle positions in the system and it's drawing a nice trail of sprites or a nice trail of, of geometry through those uh, positions and creating this kind of like strip trail um, as we can see here. So if I just turn off the follower for a second and I'm just going to add a ribbon renderer to this uh, to this leader and hopefully we can see that uh, the effect that it's happening here. So uh, I'm just going to add an initialized ribbon as well so we get some data, some width uh, and I'm just going to add a material I can see this a little bit better. Um, so if I disable the sprite renderer, you can see here our ribbon is spawning and it's drawing kind of like a nice trail all round and loopy through all of the different positions that the particles are spawning in. And if I turn on the sprite renderer, you can see that it goes to each of those locations. So, um, so that's how ribbon works. Um, and it takes the locations. So what was the initial setup here? What was this? How was this different? Well, this is using a uh, location event. So we covered events in our last video. Um, what's actually happening here is the, the ribbon trail particle is spawning and falling. And then every frame, it's ca calculating the location and passing that through to our follower. Uh, and if we just add a sprite renderer over here, I might just copy and paste this one across and then probably the initialized particle as well what we can see is turn off this ribbon so this particle system um, it's receiving that information and so we're getting little sprites at every frame along the trail of that uh, leader particle and then that's what the ribbon is being drawn through um, and so here, normally we're not rendering those sprites, we're just rendering those ribbons. Uh, now I'm getting ribbons on ribbons and ribbons, so let's not do that. Uh, if I turn off an initialized particle, that should bring it back. Here we go. Um, and so that's what the ribbon renderer is doing. Uh, so you need to create a, uh, a curve or create a path of, of sprites. Um, no, not sprites, create a path of particles, uh, and then you can render them as a kind of trail using the ribbon renderer. Um, and you can see there, you're getting this this spawn. Uh, let's just paste that back in. Um, these locations, um, and that's how the ribbon renderer works. Pretty cool. Uh, I haven't used it much myself, so I'm not going to go into all the details um, about different tessellations. And I mean, you have a lot of control over how you can uh, apply your ribbon. Um, but just as a quick overview, that is the ribbon renderer and what it does. So. Uh, the last thing I want to add, uh, or the last sort of module to go through here, and uh, we've done mesh ribbon and sprite, is the light renderer. So I'm just going to add the light render here to our leader. And we can't really see anything over here. We need a, a version in the world so we can actually see it interacting with geometry. And if I do this, I just respawn these. Um, so our light renderer. So by default, uh, it's going to be taking the color of our of our, our particle. Um, and we can add additional color to this. So if I just go in and add quite a lot of color, um, it's also going to be taking the radius 
of the particles, so the scale, um, and so we might this one might need to be quite a bit bigger. Um, and if we just keep doing this and adding large values, here we go. We can see now we're getting a light happening on each of those leaders. Uh, obviously, as it goes underneath, we get to the shadows and stuff. And let's just disable this guy. Oops. Here we go. Um, and so we're getting particle lights. Now these are optimized for particles, so they are going to be a little bit um, less quality than um, than like point lights or animated lights that you might have in the world. Um, and we can have this option here to affect translucency. That's going to make them more expensive. And uh, isn't doesn't appear to be a shadow casting option in here. So let's just have a quick look and see whether these cast shadows. It doesn't look like they do. Uh, make the radius a bit higher. I wonder if that's an option on the object itself. No, it doesn't seem to work. There is definitely an option in Cascade with particle lights. You could make them cast shadows. It made them basically as expensive as a movable light, so it was very rare that you'd want to use that. Uh, it doesn't seem like that's an option in Cascade yet, but in Cascade, in Niagara yet. Um, but if you were doing that, maybe you'd want to use a blueprint and just animate your movable light individually just because they are quite expensive and you don't want to overdo it. Um, one option that you might want to use, and this one here, is the inverse squared fall off. So uh, if I just bring in a point light for a second, um, by default, all lights have this uh, inverse squared fall off checked. Now, um, it's a little hidden option down here. Um, this is physically accurate, uh, which sometimes is what you want. Great, uh, it means you need to use quite large intensities to fill this area. You can see how big the radius of my light is with this wireframe view compared to how much sort of light influence we're really getting. Um, if we turn that off, everything's going to get a bit more uh, bright. But now we've got this component, this exponent um, that we can edit. And so you can control and you can really even set this down to nothing and get a kind of a hard edged light here. Um, not realistic, not accurate, but sometimes keeper. Um, you're now having a much bigger, uh, or sort of a larger area light. So I could go in here, set my attenuation rate down to 500. This kind of small, maybe that fall off a bit though. Um, graphically, this light looks pretty similar to the one we originally had. Inverse square fall off on radius. Thousand. Might need to go even higher. So this light here looks pretty similar. It's lighting the same kind of area, but it's actually huge. This radius is, is sort of four times the size. So by reducing the radius down uh, and changing the fall off to inverse squared and then controlling this ourselves and using a much lower light we can create a very similar effect, much cheaper. And there's an option for that in our Niagara light, use it in inverse square fall off. So if I turn that off, obviously the intensity now is crazy. We put this right down, uh, make them smaller. But we don't have a control over the, um, over the exponent. It was in the light, but it's not in the Niagara system. Well, we have here down in bindings, if we open this up, our light exponent binding is currently set to particles.light exponent. Now I can't find that in my particle attributes, so I'm not sure how we edit that, but what we can do is overwrite it with a value that we've created ourselves. So um, it doesn't exist in here. But if I go into particle spawn, I want to just trigger this one value off um, and set it at spawn. We could edit it over runtime and put it in particle update, but in this case we're going to do it in spawn. Um, and we're just going to do a create new or set, set new or existing parameter. Now I'm going to create a float. Now I potentially, if I just rename that to the same thing, that might work. Particles dot light exponent. Let's try that. Particles dot light exponent. And if I set that now to Oh, that's because I've renamed it the wrong thing. It's particles dot light exponent. I've done particles underscore. Aha, don't need the particles part because that's the particles that's come from there. And there we are. This now should be particles dot light exponent. And if I set that to one, 
and 0, 0.1. There we are. So we can create that, <coughs> that parameter that this is bound to, um, particle dot light, light exponent. So it's in the particles namespace. It's called light exponent, and that's going to be overriding um, this binding. And now we can control our exponent. And we can set that to be high, low. So um, personally, I tend to use um, lights that don't use inverse squared fall off. You just get a bit more control and be a little bit more optimized with your performance. Um, but if we do want to turn that off, we need some way to edit it. Well, we can create a binding for that parameter ourselves, which is pretty cool. So there we are. We have some lights on our falling sprites. Um, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, we've covered the last two components, um, obviously ribbons and lights. <coughs> um, there's a couple more features uh, of Niagara, which I'm going to go into next video. Um, but I hope that's been helpful. As always, any questions or anything, let me know. Uh, and a big thanks to uh, all my patrons for supporting the channel. Um, yeah, and I'll see you all next time.